This lesson is about approving post and invoicing. Invoicing, although nobody really likes it, it's a, it's a fact that it's part of the business and because when you do invoicing, you can get money and you get paid. So it's a very important factor. Autotask has this uh, to be done in two stages. First, it's approve and post. And you're like, okay, what is that exactly? This is something that you don't set up in the admin section. This is something that you have to do via the contract section. And there's approve and post. And usually your person who does the billing is going to be kind of constantly in this section. Um, I would recommend to basically uh, make this one as a favorite. One is a favorite, so this is where you make it a favorite and then it pops up here as your favorite, approve and post. On the top, there's a couple of uh, section tabs where we can do the approve and post and I will try to run you through all of those ones. First, I usually go always with the labor. In this case, I'm just going to press search. I didn't change anything just to kind of give you guys a little uh, how it looks like. And like this, nothing pops up. And the reason usually is why is because your work date is in a short interval. What I would recommend is always go back at least probably two years. There's sometimes tickets, all tickets are being worked on and a time entry comes in way later. This way with a, with a, with a two years back coverage, you cover that time. And as you can see, now we have some time entries that pop up. This time entry has a, or this grid has a lot of, lot of features, uh, a lot of columns. I want to make you aware of this little uh, column user button here. When you press on this one, you can uh, get some stuff out of the way to make your, uh, your, your view a little bit better. Classification is something that if it's a task or a ticket, I usually remove it away because there's a different way to get to that one, which I'm going to show you in a bit too. Uh, time approved, uh, that would be a good one to see if the time is approved. Um, for sure you want to have the contract in there. Resource, I would say sometimes doesn't even matter. Uh, you don't care about who's the, who's the resource. End time you don't need, you just need to have the, the hours. The total offset can be going away. Um, and hours to bill, extended price. Um, I think this is kind of okay. Uh, you already kind of have it in a little bit more customized. And now, indeed, almost everything fits on, on one screen. Um, the right away, the obvious one thing that you kind of see that there are some labor items that have a contract. Um, some don't have a contract and some that don't even have a price. And that makes sense. This example from here is for, uh, it's part of a contract. It's a recurring service. So some work was performed on a recurring service contract. And that means it's covered by the contract and then there's no price. Once you approve and post this particular line item, no invoice will come out. And that's correct because uh, it's part of the contract, so there should be no invoice. All the other ones have indeed a, an hourly rate or an extended price. And here you can also see how the round off works. So zero, here, for example, 0 0.25, it uh, rounds off to 0 0.25, but it could also be, so you know what, it needs to be 0 0.5. And then uh, with the hourly rate, it goes to that particular one. Once you make a change, you can quickly press save changes. So once you change a scope or a, a rule, it still remains there and remembers this one. Here on the button, you see that, for example, it's 1.02. You could decide, you know what, that's just a little bit over. I'm going to make it one hour. Hey, there's no hourly rate in this one. I think it was 150 and you can enter it there. Again, you press save changes and then it's there. Usually there can be a lot, a lot of filters over in here. And that's why I would suggest to go here, go also to your choose filters. And a good one in there is to either way the task or the ticket uh, type. And in this case, they call it the subtype. I'm going to add one to there. We'll refresh, and now we have the subtype. And now you can select by project task or ticket. And it makes it sometimes a little bit easier to see, okay, what has been. Uh, Done on tickets or what has been done on projects. I think in this case probably there's nothing on projects. There's nothing in this case in this here. By doing this, you can, for example, remove your your project uh, column. You can maybe even also remove your parent company, um, and that way you get a little bit less columns in your screen and makes it more visible in one shot. I go back to the ticket. We have a couple of entries here. Some people say only when a ticket is complete, you bill it out. Probably if I do it in this particular uh, demo environment, there's no ticket that has been completed, so there's nothing to bill. 
but usually use those ones to to kind of dissect through all the um, all the entries now another filter that i would suggest to put in there as well is to put your counter category and the reason why i'm giving you these kind of uh, additions is that if you have a several uh, several guys working for you uh, they're working on several tickets, doing several entries, and maybe sometimes even several uh, entries on, on a particular ticket. The amount of entries that can pop up here can be gigantic. If you want to uh, do the labor, for example, by uh, a particular, let's say, just your man at service, let's say the goal plan that you have in there, and you would then indeed press uh, search. I'm not sure if, if one of those ones were set up in this category, then you only have those ones in that category, and you can quickly uh, go through it. Maybe the time was already approved. And you can approve them by going into kind of smaller buckets it's easier to approve and post i'm going to also show you a, a setting that if uh, if there's a contract and you have a client that's always going perfectly fine you can set it as automatically approve and post let me quickly go to that one um i can do it maybe to a new contract maybe it's easier to show it uh, like that it here a tie a recurring service contract let's see and there's a button that you can say approve and post is uh, basically is not needed uh, let me just search for an existing contract and then uh, quickly edit the one look for a recurring service this one to say edit contract And there's a button that says here, time reporting requires start and stop times. Like uh, in the previous video, I always basically enable that one. But approve and post labor is now set to manually. That means that every entry, although it's part of the contract, will still be presented to you to be approved against the, the contract. Once you have your Autodesk set up running perfectly and you know your client and you know this client always has its, uh, its work within the, within the range, it's set up with the proper exclusions, uh, then you might be se selecting that this one goes basically on time shoot approval or immediately without review that means you will uh, eliminate a whole bunch of manual steps to go through all these kind of things so keep that in consideration if you have a good client and it's basically an all you can eat buffet then usually you can put it on immediately without review on the contract make sure that once you change it you press save and close and then you don't get those entries in approve and post and going back to approve and post and for now we stick still with the labor section uh, remembers the date when uh, you go in and here's a couple of, uh, of entries I'm just gonna approve and post just the, the letter to you just select them remember I made some changes uh, this one somehow didn't took it to extend the price check that in another one and that's because the different is a different company that doesn't have the setup in here and that was on the contract and i'll put another one in there as well first one and i say approve and post what it does is basically it cleans out those particular entries let's say those ones have been approved either way it goes to the billing section or it goes to the uh, to the section where it's being applied to the contract and once it's applied to the contract you can see if you have profitability on it same of these kind of steps also apply for the section where there's charges again it remembers the date once you're in there you have the date you also have the column chooser here and you also have these filters here and you can kind of set up the same setup as you had uh, in the other one here's again a couple of ones let me also approve and post here for example the letter one you say approve and post that one too so we get some items in the billing section Subscription might be there too. Once you have subscriptions and you use it, they also need to go to the approve and post section. So you have them over here. We already approved and post one, so we'll, that one will show up in a bit. And then recurring contracts. Also, this is something that you need to do approve and post. So once you have your monthly billing, or maybe you do it on a daily basis based on the different setup expiry dates in the contracts, you can also put it over here and uh, invoice those ones as well. As you can see, Here's a whole bunch of line items uh, are listed. But as you can see, these ones, a lot of them are from 2020. Um, since this is all, let's say, from uh, April 2020, a good practice to be would be, you say, you know, I'm going to bill per month and I'm going to bill everything that's in the month of April from 2020. T 
change it over it's the, the date change there and there's nothing there um, so we go to the to the, the, the second section there was uh, January And it's nothing there, but um, I hope you get my point. It's uh, it's probably the date range. I saw some dates over here, but I see there is a different setting in the date ranges. But by setting the date range to the correct uh, time frame that you want to have it, uh, those entries will pop up. I mean, maybe you can do in this case we can do uh, all big uh, big range. Um, I see that it's supposed in uh, in May. So what you can do, you can do it by sections. And let's say we do this one for Auditors Corporation. We're going to build these ones out. And again, it's a proven post, and then they will fly through. And the same what you can do for the milestones as well, the same, same pattern. Now, once you have these ones to a proven post, you still don't have an invoice. And that's, of course, the important thing that you ultimately want to get to. Then you go to the items to invoice. By default, also, only uh, this one has a, a, a limited time frame. Uh, again, I would suggest to go back at least one year. This section has a limited uh, limitation of only one year. They're trying to work it on to make it about two years, but uh, make sure that you always put a year. And the reason why you go back so much is because then you have a lot more uh, older in, uh, items that you can uh, invoice and they're still there. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of uh, items listed over here and that can all be ready to invoice. Uh, if you don't already approve and post right away, you know kind of exactly what is here. You can quickly see if indeed all the all the companies that you wanted to build for are in here and you can say this button preview process invoice now, by default this one has been set to say view the invoices and we can even say preview invoices right now you have the ability to, to review them and see if that all are in line with what you uh, thought if that everything looks good they will be presented per invoice uh, on the setup how you have it just clearly preview and in here you can see all the line items that are in there see these are all the recurring contracts the services you go to the next one this one has a little bit less uh, less items some recurring items and we can go and this way you can scroll through uh, the, the particular invoices making sure that they're all good if you see something you look like that's not okay that needs to be changed you have the button of the unpost here and that reverts it back to the approve and post section and you can make edits uh, in there you can then also make the edits where the uh, the, the time entry can be changed can be modified that the hours can be changed still or, or the verbiage because right now here you're stuck in these kind of things you can't make any edits anymore once you say hey everything's perfectly fine then you can say uh, after creating in you know, other invoices create an xml file uh, usually use the invoices the invoice template you can also uh, change it maybe use the different uh, the default and once they're really sure to go you can press the button process invoices and then they're good to go and either way they will be sent out uh, via email to your your customers like how you have it set up or if you have a uh, integration with any of the accounting tools, it will basically process them and the accounting system will pick them up and you will get them there. That's in the high level overview what you can do here. Also remember over here you have the column chooser to make it easier to select which invoices you want to do. Also over here on top you have the choose filters, also a section to maybe have less filters in there. Uh, when you do the approve and post with the proper filters and you do it in small batches, then only here in the invoices will also be a limited amount and it will be easier to process. Hope that uh, is all clear. If you guys have any questions, visit our Facebook group and post a comment there. Thank you.